Hey friends, happy Wednesday. Uh, today is April 15th and I wanna dive right into class today. Make sure you have a space for your notes set up and ready to go. Um, here's what we're doing today. Today we are solving um, two-step equations and sometimes they're actually multi-step equations. Sometimes they could be um, more than just two steps. In this form, P parentheses X plus Q equals R. Go ahead and make your notes look like this. And while you do that, I'll just talk about the difference between what we're doing today and what we practiced yesterday. Uh, did a really good job on our work yesterday. Um, we were solving two-step equations in the form where there was a variable term and a constant term, no parentheses, no grouping symbols. Um, and we just followed those steps, add or subtract, and then multiply or divide to solve, and then check using substitution. We're gonna do a lot of that still today, but with the added sort of complication of this uh, set of grouping symbols and this factor that needs to be either distributed or divided. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, I want to review just the procedure so that you have it fresh in your mind for when you do your guided practice um, today. First things first, um, when we are solving these kind of multi-step equations, I have two choices when I start to solve and I notice there's an equation in this form. The first is I can distribute or I can divide the factor outside the parentheses. So those are my two choices, distribute or divide, okay? In my example, I used only one, obviously, of those. And in all of the examples I'll show you, I'm just gonna pick one of those. But for any question, you could do either of these choices. Okay. Um, that factor outside of the parentheses was the P in your notes in that part of the equation. My second step then and my third step are exactly the same as the ones yesterday. Uh, you just have to do this extra step first. So then either I'm going to add or subtract depending on what's the inverse operation. And my third step, I'm either going to multiply or divide depending on what is my inverse operation. And lastly, I'm going to check my solution. So here's the example. Um, here is what an equation might look like in this format. I notice there are grouping symbols. I notice also there's subtraction. So I went ahead and rewrote this using keep change change so that everything was addition. That helps me when I use the distributive property. And that is the choice that I decided to make. I decided to distribute and this one instead of dividing. Okay. So I went ahead and distributed the 4 to y and got 4y. And I distributed the 4 to negative 2, and I got negative 8. That's right, because a positive times a negative is a negative equals 7. Once I get to this step, the equation looks exactly the way that it did yesterday. And I'm just following now step 2 and 3, which were the same as yesterday's work. right? So I'm going to add 8 to both sides in order to um, make my constant term 0. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So I'm just left with 4y equals 15. Then I decided to divide by 4 because that's the inverse operation of this multiplication that's happening to y. And I got y equals 15 fourths. Could have written it as a mixed number, could have written it as a decimal, or like this, an improper fraction. Okay. So just a reminder, in this first step, this distribute step, that was a choice that I made to distribute. You could have also divided each side by 4. I didn't want to do that in this particular equation because 4 doesn't go into 7 evenly. So that's one thing to consider when you're deciding, should I distribute or divide? Okay, uh, we're going to do a little bit of guided practice now. The first two questions here are just solve and check on your own. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to start um, and then maybe about a minute more to finish after I give some feedback and reminders. The last two questions in our practice today, three and four, are um, they just have a little bit more text. So I'm going to pull up Illuminate instead of putting them on this slide. Okay, one and a half minutes to complete these two questions, or at least get a start on them. Go ahead. You made somebody's heart burn. 
now I have to. You're about 30 seconds in. So for the first question, you should have decided, are you going to distribute that six to each term inside the parentheses? Or are you going to divide six on both sides? Last 20 seconds, if you are able to finish solving an equation, make sure you've completed that check step. All right, there is our time. If you need a second to finish up question one only, go ahead and pause the video to finish up question one only. All right, um, I want to show you my work for this question. For question one, I noticed that the factor outside the parentheses is six. I decided to divide each side by six. You could have also made the choice to distribute six to each term inside the parentheses. Um, I'll talk at the end about why I made that choice, okay? Then I've got, once I divide each side by six, I got 24 divided by six is four equals 13 plus nine C. Okay, I drop to the parentheses because there's nothing happening to the terms inside the parentheses anymore. I've divided away that factor that was being multiplied. So I drop those parentheses. Then I just follow my steps for a two-step equation. I subtract the constant term because it's positive. Okay, those cancel out. Four minus 13 is negative nine equals nine C. I divide by nine on each side. Negative nine divided by nine is negative one. My solution is negative one equals C. When I did this check step, I just took my original equation, but instead of C, I put negative one here. I know nine times negative one is negative nine. 13 plus negative nine is four. Six times four is 24, which yes, is equal to 24. Okay. Um, I wanna talk about why I decided to divide here because I want you to follow the same thinking when you complete your independent practice today. It's gonna to help you, whoops, it's gonna help you out. Um, I wanna talk about why dividing is a good choice here. Dividing is a good choice here because six, which is the number outside of the parentheses, goes into 24 evenly. Dividing is a good choice here because six goes into 24 evenly. In some problems, I might have like, what if this was a seven? Could I do 24 divided by seven easily? No, I couldn't, right? Because seven's not a factor of 24. But because six is a factor of 24, it goes into 24 evenly, then dividing becomes really simple, right? A lot more simple than multiplying six times 13 and six times nine C. Your question of the day is right here. Here's your question of the day. You're gonna put it right in your Google form right now. I want you to answer the question, why is dividing a good choice in question one? So your answer could sound like dividing is a good choice in number one because, and then you type your answer. Go ahead and pause the video now and answer your question of the day. Awesome, you should have your question of the day answered at this point. We are also going to be answering the other two questions in the rest of this video, so keep watching, okay? Um, I'm going to give you uh, about another minute to finish question two, making sure that you have also completed that check step, okay? One minute on the clock, go ahead. <laughs> Halfway through our time, 
think about is eight a factor of 16. That's gonna help you decide if dividing is a good choice or if you should distribute. All right. Let's review. Here is my work for question two. Um, I decided to divide by eight. Again, you could have distributed eight times 11 and eight times three each, but because eight is a factor of 16, um, I thought I could get rid of it really easily and not have larger numbers here to work with, okay? My answer is negative three equals H. Here's what a good check step looks like. Awesome. If you have any questions about this work, this is a great opportunity to pause the video and really look carefully at each of the steps if you got a different answer or if your check step didn't work out. Also, just a plug to attend Ms. Russell's office hours at 315 to get a little bit of extra help, especially with deciding whether to divide or distribute. Go ahead and pause the video now and enter the answer in Google Forms. Awesome. We are ready to move on to question three. Okay, question three says, every month Jordan puts $14 into her bank account. I see 14 in this equation here. Her grandma puts additional money into Jordan's bank account every month. It does not tell us how much. I'm guessing that X represents the amount of money that, grandma's, that grandma puts in. After 12 months, Jordan has $216 in her bank account. The equation below can be used to determine X, the amount of money her grandma adds each month. Yep, so X does represent the amount of money grandma puts in the bank account. Jordan puts $14 herself. Why is that being multiplied by 12? It's being multiplied by 12 because we're counting after 12 months, she has $216 in the bank account. Okay, the question is how much did Jordan's grandma put into the account each month? That's what X represents. So this question is asking us to solve for X. Go ahead and copy down this equation onto your notes and begin solving for X. I'm going to put a minute on the timer. Go ahead and get started. We're just about halfway through our time. Think about should you divide or distribute for this one? Either is okay. All right, let's go ahead and come back together. Here's my work for number three. Okay, um, I decided on this one to distribute the 12 to each term inside the parentheses. I made that choice because I don't know how many times 12 goes into 216, and I thought it might be easier to multiply 12 times 14 and 12 times x than it would be to do long division. However, many of you are really good at long division and kind of like it too. So maybe you did 216 divided by 12, you would have gotten 18, okay? So you, if you had x plus 14 equals uh, 18, then great job. I distributed here, and then I had just a two-step equation in the form that we practiced yesterday. I went ahead and subtracted and then divided. I got x equals 4. Here's what a good check step looks like. Okay, so my solution was four. So in this question, 
Um, the It was asking how much did grandma put into the bank account? She puts in $4 every month because the value of X was four. Okay. All right, last one team. Here is question four. I want you to read it and decide what to do. I'm going to put a minute and a half on the clock. That time starts now. Go ahead. So one thing you can do, team, is start to eliminate answers that you know are wrong. So maybe read the first step for A, B, C, and D and decide, do any of those show me that that answer choice must be incorrect? Last 10 seconds, go ahead and pick your best answer. If you need more time, just pause the video. All right. Um, my thinking is here. I got the answer choice B. Um, my thinking is loop covered up. Um, but here's what I thought. I thought if I were solving this equation first, I would divide by three or distribute three. When I made that think, when I did that thinking, um, I realized that A must be not true because A said to, uh, distribute to M, but not to the 1.2. So A was not true. Then I thought, okay, if I distributed, my next step would be to add three and six tenths to each side. That's not what C said. So I knew that C was not true. So far I've eliminated A and C. I then was looking at B and D. I saw that D was not true because it had the wrong operation on the second step. Okay, it said subtract, it should have said add. So D was not true. I think B is the correct answer. Um, just a reminder, this is question four. Go ahead and enter the answer to this question in the Google form below. Awesome. You should be good to go if you have a webcam and you know how to take a picture, save it, and upload it. Please upload your notes. I love looking at them. Um, and as I see them, I'm going to start logging some Vista virtual points for uploading those notes. Um, so get yourself in the raffle, get yourself a pizza uh, at the end of the week uh, by uploading your notes, okay? Um, your independent practice tonight is worth six points on Illuminate, so make sure you are completing that independent practice on the next form, uh, on the next page of the Google form. And your skill builder, make sure you're logging in with your VCP email so that it works correctly. If it doesn't work correctly, please shoot me or Miss Russell a text or hop into office hours for some help. That's it for me. Have a really wonderful afternoon, and I will see you guys here tomorrow.